Is that yours? Can we share? No. Hey, yo. You don't like that. Okay, bye-bye. Hello, today I'm gonna be talking about the Ren Faire. So because I get a lot of questions about Ren Faires generally and like what to do at your first Ren Faire, how to go to a Ren Faire, I thought I would just cover it in a big video. This will probably end up being two parts. I know definitely that going over clothing for the Ren Faire is gonna be a separate video. So this is part one, stay tuned for part two later. Before we get started really quick, I'm gonna plug some of my other videos. I have done a bunch of videos on the Ren Faire, doing Ren Faire casual outfits, buying all my clothes at a Ren Faire, um, Ren Faire vlogs generally. So I will link all of those in the description, check them out. They can kind of be like supplemental to this video. The first question, that I get a lot is how do I find a Ren Faire near me or the message I usually get actually is man I wish there were Ren Faires near me. Odds are there probably are though you may have to drive a bit to get to it. So Google is your best friend. You can just Google where you live Ren Faires and that will help you come up with where your closest Ren Faire is. There are a few websites that will list all of the Ren Faires. I know Wikipedia itself has a list of quite a few Ren Faires globally. So that's a good place to go if you're not located in North America. But there's also the renlist.com, fairfinder.com, renaissancefairfestival.com. These are all different places that will list basically every Ren Faire that they know of and the location and the website of each of these fairs. So I'll list all those links in the description so you can check them out and look for a Ren Faire that's near you. If there are no Ren Faires near you, you can search for things like fairy festivals, Celtic or Irish festivals, Viking festivals, or another option that has been popping up recently is like fantasy ball kind of event. So there's the Labyrinth of Jareth in LA and then I'm also hosting the Fête du Fay ball with some friends so you could go to that if you're in Baltimore the weekend of September 3rd. For a quick rundown of the largest fairs in the US there's the Texas Renaissance Festival, the Minnesota Renaissance Festival, Bristol which is in Wisconsin, Southern California Renaissance Pleasure Fair which I have a video on so check that out and then my home fair the Maryland Ren Fair. Those are only the top five largest in the US there are quite a few others that are also pretty large. And then like there's lots of little tiny fairs that are popping up all over the place. Last year, I went to the Sparta Run Fair in New Jersey. It was really cute. It only runs for a few weekends, but smaller run fairs are kind of popping up a lot recently because run fairs have gotten so popular. You never know if you didn't have one in your area before, you might have one in your area now. So just like keep checking and you might find a little tiny fair that needs your support. So go and support your local run fair. And finally, if you're outside of the US, Europe has a lot of medieval fairs rather than Renaissance fairs. And again, you can find events that are near you on the Wikipedia page for Renaissance festivals. The next comment that I get a lot is, I have no friends to go to the Renaissance festival with. That one is a little bit of a tough one. I did not have friends who were super into it in high school. My best friend was thankfully into it, so we would go together. However, when I first started going to Renaissance festivals, I was only like 15 years old, so I would just drag my parents with me. If you have any willing family members that you are on good terms with, just bring them with you. Odds are they'll have a pretty okay time. If you have friends who like you and uh, are willing to do activities with you, even if the Ren Faire might not be their thing, they'll probably like it. Like there's not really a bad time you can have at the Renaissance festival unless Unless, like something traumatic happens I guess but basically what you do at a renaissance festival is you hang out eat food drink meat go shopping and that's it like how can that be a bad time if you really don't have anybody in your life that you can bring to the renaissance festival there are other ways to make friends you can always check out Facebook groups each fair pretty much has its own Facebook group and the people who post on those are the people who go to the fairs so Facebook is a pretty good place to find people to meet up with at the renaissance festival who are friendly and welcoming and open to new people if you are already at the renaissance festival and you want to make friends and you didn't find anybody on Facebook and you didn't find anybody in real life to go with you. Ren Faire people are super friendly, super nice, and like we're all just nerds who like to dress up and go to events in costumes. So if you are a drinker, you could go to bars. The bars are really like the best place to make friends because everybody is just having a good time and totally willing to like talk to the person in the next table. Another way to make friends at the Ren Faire is to just compliment people's outfits. Everybody likes to hear that their outfit looks nice and it's a really good way to strike up a conversation. If you're waiting in line for the ATM and you just are trying to kill time, that's another good way to just talk to somebody and say like, man, this ATM line is long, isn't it? And there you go. You've 
potentially made a new friend. And then kind of the last place to make friends is once you've made one friend at the Renaissance Festival, you probably will be making friends with all of their friends. And that will just kind of be how you expand your network of friends at the Renaissance Festivals. Once you have an in with one person, then you're probably in with a lot of people. I know that I have personally made a lot of my Ren Faire friends through knowing like one person through cosplay and then they introduce me to a whole bunch of other people at the Renaissance Festival. I think harder to not make friends at the Ren Faire than it is to make friends if that makes sense. If you are open to talking to other people or open to other people talking to you because a lot of time people will just come up and talk to you then you will make a friend at the Ren Faire. So now you found a Ren Faire to go to and found people to go with, what do you do to prepare for the Ren Faire? So I kind of have a core list of things that I bring with me to every Ren Faire. And the first thing that I bring is cash. A lot of Ren Faires will only take cash for their food and beverages. So if you would like to eat or drink anything, definitely have cash. There will be ATMs. However, the ATM line is always the longest line. It's like the ATM line, the food lines at lunch, and then the bathroom lines. So along with the cash, I always bring my wallet. It's just kind of a necessity for leaving in the house so is my phone however red fairs don't always have the best reception so if you're with a group of people and you want to stay with that group of people you should come up with a designated meeting time and place if you guys all get separated i also bring band-aids so along with band-aids other kind of first aid stuff ibuprofen is definitely very useful i bring my epi pens i am really allergic to stinging insects so i make sure to bring both of my epi pens because it can be hard to get out of the run fair quickly so that gives me about a 30 minute window to get to a hospital if i need to Lactate is good if you are lactose intolerant. Any meds that you might need throughout the day, you should definitely bring them with you. And that's kind of the extent of the medication first aid kind of stuff that I bring. There is also always a first aid location at every run fair. So if you have some kind of injury that goes beyond what band-aids and ibuprofen can cover, you can always go to them. Various other things you might need are sunblock. Make sure to reapply your sunblock every few hours and hand sanitizer. The only bathroom at a lot of these places are porta potties and they definitely run out of soap by the end of the day. <laughs> Personally, I also always bring hair ties because it does feel better to get my hair off my neck if it's a really hot day. And finally, because it's usually really hot at the Ren Fair, there is a lot of alcohol going around and not enough water probably being consumed. So I always make sure to bring liquid IV. I have a lot of flavors of liquid IV. I'm really into liquid IV, but they have normal standard flavors. There's also like immune boost flavors. One of my favorite flavors is the lemon ginger, which is a matcha flavor and also has caffeine in it, which is good at the beginning of the day. If you're worried about how much sugar you're consuming because meat is also very sugary, they recently came out with a sugar-free version of liquid IV. So I got the white peach flavor. It's really good. I love it. And I definitely recommend bringing it with you to the Ren Fair. You can bring sealed water bottles to some of them and you can bring empty water bottles so you can fill up. So it's very easy then to go to first aid, get a glass of water and just dump your liquid IV in there and you will feel much better <laughs> throughout the day, I promise, because it is really super easy to get dehydrated at these events. Speaking of being dehydrated, every time that you drink a fun beverage, you should follow it with an actual water beverage. Don't get dehydrated. <laughs> So that's my list of stuff that I bring to the Ren Fair. That is really the list of everything that always makes it in my bag every single time. I don't really have recommendations for bags because that's really up to you. Tend to pick something that will go with my costume but will also obviously fit everything that I need to fit in there. Some people I've seen bring baskets that they put all their stuff into or some people will wear little belt pouches that like go with like piratey kind of looks. So it's really up to you how you wanna carry everything just as long as you can carry it and your stuff isn't gonna fall out like that's a good enough bag. So once you figured out what you're bringing to the Ren Fair, what else do you need to do to prepare? The first thing I like to do, because I always get very excited, is to check out what events they have. Some of the performers will not be at each Ren Fair throughout the season because a lot of the performers do travel. So I know famous TikToker Jaxie Whipper, I think his name is, he was at the Maryland Ren Fair last year for only the first two weekends. If you were to really want to see a specific performer, you should check their website to see which weekends they're going and kind of plan to go when you want to see them. Apart from picking a weekend to go, it's really good to know when the events are because then you can kind of schedule your day around them. Especially because it'll make it easier around meal times if you have a plan if you just go when it is like a normal meal time you'll probably be in line for food for like at least an hour so good to know what events you want to see ahead of time so that you can make sure that you actually do make it to those events you should also always always check the weapons policy most run fairs do sell weapons and they will hold them for you until the end of the day or they'll let you take it back to your car smaller run fairs they tend to be a little bit more lenient but at the Maryland run fair you definitely cannot bring any weapons in unless 
they are very obviously fake or children's weapons. This kind of sword, for example, would not be allowed. Do not bring a metal sword into most Ren Fairs. There used to be a policy that if you peace tied it, that would be good enough and you could feel free to bring it with you around. I think a lot of those policies have changed. I know that when I was in high school, peace tying was an option. Now it seems like the rules have gotten stricter and for good reason, there's a lot of violence out there in the world right now. But a lot of the policies have kind of moved towards even peace tying is not okay. Peace tying, by the way, is just when you kind of like take a zip tie so that you can't take your sword out of the scabbard. I don't really think that would work for this sword anyway. So you can't peace tie every weapon and a lot of places do not think that peace tying is safe enough anyways. I have, however, been able to bring this kind of weapon into the Maryland Ren Fair. This is very obviously plastic. It is like a pretty solid plastic. So some fairs will let you have LARP weapons and like foam weapons. So just kind of check the policy. If you're unsure, just leave the weapon at home. Don't bring it. Another really important thing to check is if you have food allergies, what food you can actually eat at the fair and if there is any food that you can eat. So I have friends who are vegan and gluten-free and usually what they end up eating at the Ren Fair is potatoes. Like they can eat french fries and they can eat a baked potato and that's pretty much all they eat when they go to the Ren Fair. A lot of Ren Fairs though will have an exception to the like no bringing food in if they don't have anything for you to eat. You are planning to go to a Ren Fair and you know that they don't have any options, like you are allergic to everything, then you can't eat any of the food that they have available. Then you could check with their website and make sure that it's okay for you to bring your own food. If you aren't able to bring your own food into the fair, you can always leave stuff in your car. So like non-perishables, or if you have a really good cooler, you can just leave food in your car and leave and come back throughout the day to eat your food. This is also a really good option if you don't wanna spend money on food. Depending on the rent fare, food can be really expensive. It's fairly cheap at Maryland and at PA from what I recall, but LA's food was extremely expensive. If you want to save a little bit of money, bringing food and kind of like tailgating it in the parking lot would not be a bad idea. Before you get there, you should also check out the parking situation. I think the Minnesota Ren Fair has a parking policy of you need to buy a parking pass before you even arrive. So if you get there, you don't have a parking pass, then sorry, I guess. So definitely check out the parking situations before you arrive. Some of them are paid, some of them are not, some of them you have to reserve ahead of time, some of them you don't. So you really wanna find out what that situation is before you get there and are scrambling to figure out if you can even park there. You should also check the weather before you go to the Ren Fair. The weather will very heavily dictate what you wear. So if it's really hot and sunny outside, you probably wanna wear a lot of light clothing like linen or cotton. On the kind of rare cold day of the Ren fair or if it's really rainy you probably want to pick something else to wear so definitely check the weather ahead of time that will also kind of dictate what footwear you bring because normally the rent fairs can be really dusty but if it's raining that day it's going to be really muddy so you might want a different pair of shoes speaking of like dusty dirty muddy roads accessibility is a big one that you should look into if you have any kind of limitations on mobility some rent fairs are very very accessible i think the la rent fair seemed pretty accessible from when i was there and the pa rent fair is pretty accessible because it is less hilly and has some more paved areas however the maryland rent fair really not accessible it is super hilly. There's a lot of steep slopes. It gets very crowded. There are not many paved areas. I personally would think that it would be really hard to get around if you were in a wheelchair or needed some kind of mobility aid. So it's a good idea to check what the accessibility is for the Ren Fair that you're trying to go to. So you probably also wanna decide what time you're getting to the Ren Fair. If you wanna get there right as the gates open, you should be prepared to either get there super early or wait in a long line of traffic. The line to get into Ren Fairs just while you're in your car can always be really long if you are trying to get there at the very opening. However, if you wait like an hour or two after opening, that line is usually gone. On. So if you don't like to sit in a car line or if you don't want to wait to get into the Ren Fair, getting there a little bit later in the day is probably a better bet for you. However, if you really want to get there early, then get there very early. Usually when we are getting there early, we'll bring some food with us. We'll have breakfast in the car while we're waiting for the Ren Fair gates to open. And then once we eat, we can go right up to the gates and then we're in immediately pretty much. A lot of people also get dressed in the parking lot. So they'll drive to the Ren Fair in their street clothes and then put on their garb in the parking lot. What I personally do is I'll have my base outfit on to drive and then any accessories or my corsets or anything I will put on once we get there because driving in them is uncomfortable, but I also don't want to 
fully change in the parking lot. And then my last little tip for getting to the Ren Fair and like getting into the Ren Fair is to buy your tickets online. A lot of Ren Fairs have moved entirely to online ticket sales. And even if you can buy tickets at the event, they frequently sell out before the day even gets there. Once you're inside, it's very tempting to just go off and explore. But really the first thing that you should do is figure out where you can get water. Water is super important. I cannot tell you how many times I've seen ambulances come up to the Ren Fair and take people away probably because of dehydration. So make sure you know where free water is if you are looking to not spend money. If you are okay with buying water, then you can obviously buy water bottles at most of the places you can buy food. But if you want free water, go find first aid. It's usually at the first aid location. And make sure you know where it is and how to get there before you're super thirsty or like on your third drink. The other thing you should probably figure out where it is, is the bathroom. <laughs> you really don't wanna be trying to search for a bathroom and then waiting in line for the bathroom bathroom when you already really need to pee. So look for water in the bathrooms first and your whole day will probably be a lot smoother. Once you're in the gates, they will hand you a map and that will tell you where everything is. But personally, I find it a lot easier to figure out where all of the things are and get to them later if I just go there first. Another tip is to go to the back of the run fair first and then work your way towards the front because everyone else will be looking at the shops that are right at the front and it gets very congested. So if you kind of bypass the big crowd that comes in immediately and goes straight to the back of the Ren Fair, you will have a lot fewer crowds to deal with as you work your way to the front and you're kind of like working in opposition of what everybody else is doing and it's a lot less stressful. So that kind of covers all of your basics for the Ren Fair and the rest of like the survival guide of what you want to do at the Ren Fair really depends on what you're trying to get out of the Ren Fair. So there's a lot of reasons that people go to the Ren Fair, obviously. It's like any other event. Some people are there for the food, some are there for friends, some are there for shopping, some are there for drinking. So depending on what you want to get out of the Ren Fair is kind of what will dictate what you do next after you've covered your how to find a rent fair who to go with how to get there what to bring all of those things once you're there then you can kind of explore and figure out what you do like to do for people who are there for food bring cash definitely bring cash you'll have a better time of getting food if you eat at kind of weird times so if you go at noon or like around normal lunch time then you're gonna run into a ton of lines if you go at like three o'clock, you probably will have fewer lines to deal with. If you're there for friends and you're not going with like an already established group of friends, then like I said before, go to the bars if you drink, make conversation with strangers, give people compliments. And like, if you're standing in line for a while, then talk to the person next to you. If you're there for shopping, which is frequently what I am there for, you can look up the stores ahead of time on their website, or you can look at the Facebook group to see what other people's favorite stores are. You should definitely bring cash for smaller purchases. However, for larger purchases over like, 10 20 dollars a lot of the vendors will take a card so you don't have to have it all in cash if you're looking to like buy some leather armor for 1500 dollars you can just put it on your credit card <laughs> I do advise kind of giving yourself a budget and a spending limit so you don't go overboard. Depending on the rent fair, most rent fairs have banned like resellers or like kind of generic sellers and a lot of the vendors will be artists and artisans. So they do tend to be more expensive than like buying whatever dress you found on Amazon, right? So those purchases will add up. Do what you want with your money, but I like to put a spending limit on myself for each day or even for the whole season so that I am not overspending while I'm there. You could also be going just to see the performances. In that case, then you probably want an event schedule. Like I mentioned before, you can find those online. You can also find them on the map that they hand you as you're walking in the gate. And if you're looking to just go to performances, just like do it like a normal concert or like a convention or anything. Figure out which ones are a priority for you to see and then just go see them. Finally, the drinking. If you are there for drinking, which many, many people are. First off, please drink safely. The Ren Faire drinks can be really sugary, so make sure you're drinking water in between each drink. So have a fun drink and then have a water and then another fun drink and then a water. Make sure you're also eating food. Please don't throw up. That's no fun for you and that's also no fun for the people who have to clean it up. And speaking of the people who work there, bring cash and please, please tip your bartenders. They are working in the heat for you all day and they are working to make your experience better. So it's really nice to tip. <laughs> and then it shouldn't have to be said, but it does need to be said. If you are drinking a lot, don't be belligerent and don't touch people without their permission, please. Just be a considerate person and everybody can have a good time drinking. All that said, the bars are a really great place to meet a lot of really welcoming and friendly people. No matter what you're doing at the Ren Fair, please, please pace yourself. If you are planning to go right at opening and stay till closing, you have a really long day ahead of you. It's a ton of fun, but you should also be making sure that you are taking breaks to decompress and make sure that you're eating and drinking water. 
Depending on the fair, there may be designated areas for like a quiet time, but if you aren't able to get to those areas, some of them are kind of like VIP areas, you can always go sit in your car for a little bit to get away from the crowds. And if you didn't drive there, if you can't find any other options, go to first aid and they will be able to help you out. I used to go to the rent fair a lot as a teenager, but the first time that I went back as an adult, it had probably been over a decade since I had last been. And I was just so excited. I tried to cram in way too much in one day. I was there from opening to close. I definitely was not drinking enough water and I only took about one half hour break. And I only did that because it started raining. Only had two drinks that day. And I think I split them with Micah, but I felt absolutely horrible the next day. Really overexerted myself, was really dehydrated, probably didn't eat enough food. I also kind of spent the entire day a little bit overstimulated. So all of that combined just really overtaxed my system and made it so I was kind of non-functional the next day. So in order to avoid that, please make sure that you're taking breaks, that you're pacing yourself, that you're drinking water, eating food, not drinking too much alcohol, and taking time to like enjoy everything, but also make sure you're doing it in a safe way that is not going to make you suffer later. <laughs> Run fair clothing is a topic I could probably talk about for hours, so I'll be making a separate video on what kind of outfits to wear, where to get outfits, what you can buy at the Run fair, what you can buy thrifting, or or any other thing. But for now, I'll go over a few basics. Most Ren Fairs take place in the summer or the autumn, so it is very, very hot. You'll probably feel best wearing natural fibers like cotton or linen to stay cool. And I think it's more fun generally to go dressed up than in street clothes, but you should really wear whatever you're most comfortable in. I have two pairs of Ren Fair boots, one brown and one black, and these cover pretty much all of my outfits for the Ren Fair. It gets very, very dusty at the Ren Fair, and if it's not dusty, then it's muddy. <laughs> so it's really important to have a pair of comfortable shoes that also have good treads so that you're not slipping all over the place. If sneakers are your only option for shoes, definitely wear the sneakers rather than wearing the uncomfortable shoes that match your outfit. It's not worth being uncomfortable all day just to match your outfit. Sneakers are perfectly acceptable and will keep you safer than wearing like cute heels or something. I personally would never wear sandals to the Ren fair. Some people do, but your feet will be super gross by the end of the day and odds are someone will step on you if it's pretty crowded that day. So I would just avoid the sandals. If you do decide to dress up, you don't have to wear strictly Renaissance clothing. Ren fairs have kind of become more like fantasy fairs where the Renaissance part of the name comes in with the story that kind of flows through the entire season. So really briefly each season has a storyline so you may have seen like the king or the queen those go along with a renaissance period storyline throughout the season and each season is the next year of the storyline that's where the renaissance part of renaissance fair comes from as a patron you don't need to dress in renaissance clothing any kind of fantasy clothing or historical clothing is totally fine you can also dress up in cosplay or it's pretty popular to do like a star trek or doctor who costume and say that you're a time traveler from the future some people don't like it when people dress up in cosplay or like future costumes. Do what you want. If you do want to feel a little bit more part of the general atmosphere and also dress like that, some fairs have what's called the day of wrong and that's the very last day of the fair where people will wear something that is not what they would typically wear for the Ren Fair. So that's the day that you'll see a lot of cosplays and a lot of like future costumes, I guess. So if you want to dress up in something more like that and want to also feel part of the experience rather than like you're the odd one out, maybe going the last day is a better choice for you. So that's pretty much it for the basic Ren Fair survival guide. If I missed anything, let me know and I'll put it in a second video. I hope that this was really helpful for anybody who has been looking to go to a Ren Fair for the first time or if it's been a while and you are are wondering what it's kind of like now to go to a Ren Fair. Again, I do have a lot of videos on my channel already about Ren Fair, so check them out. I will link them all in the description as well as where you can find lists of Ren Fairs, hopefully in your area, but maybe a little bit of a distance from you. I love Ren Fairs. It's somehow accidentally become kind of part of my brand. I did not actually intend to happen. I really just like going to the Ren Fair to like look at the costumes and meet up with friends and go shopping and drink mead. Not complaining, I always like an excuse to go to Ren Fairs and talk about Ren Fairs. So I hope that this was helpful and I hope that you guys like this kind of video. If you do, let me know, like I said before, any suggestions, any questions, and I will be happy to answer those in a future video. The costume what to wear video will be coming out probably next or second next. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, you know, leave all those comments and subscribe if you want to see more from me. And I will be hosting the Fetu Fe Ball in Baltimore on September 3rd. There is also a retreat attached to the event that 
that I'm not personally running, but my friend Sarah is. So if you are looking for a fantasy event to go to and you are less of the Ren Faire type and more of the, I don't know, Akatar fantasy Holly Black type, then check the event out. I'll link that in the description as well. And I hope to see you guys there and also in the next video. Bye.